Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, we are going to take a look at a couple of comics that I would absolutely not touch. I would not touch these books at all, at least not right now. Now, this does not mean that these are not great comics. It just means that now potentially isn't the time to snag these books. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples. And I certainly would encourage you, if you disagree or agree, comment down in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are. But let's go ahead and take a look at the very first book that I would absolutely not touch. All right. So the first book that I would not touch is this one right here. The Last of Us American Dreams issue number one. And this it honestly is a really cool book. It is a cool book that is based upon a, a video game. And that is part of the reason why the comic is popular. The other part of it, of course, is the hit TV show that's on HBO Max that a lot of people are absolutely enjoying, myself included. And so because of the game, because of the, the TV show, because the fact that this thing has been greenlit for a second season, this is part of the reason why I would not touch this book right now. And potentially the time to have purchased this book would have been a few years ago. Uh, but let's go ahead and look, take a look at this, this dark horse book and, and let's see what the numbers say. One of the very first things that I will highlight here for you is that there are not a lot of copies of this book on the census. There are only 295 total graded copies out there. And I have a massive collection of 100,000 comics. I don't even have this book at all. Don't have it in inventory. I have no clue how many were actually printed. Uh, but again, only less than 300 have actually been graded across blue label and yellow label. And, and I also see some qualified is there as well. There's two qualified. But let's go ahead and drill down into the data. And I want to I want to go ahead and look at the 9.8 because again for me I think the 9.8 is the is the sweet spot if you will for modern comics. So what we are seeing here right now you can see it. Look look at the trend line. <laughs> the trend line for this book back in August of 2020 just goes up. It goes up to 2021 uh, at a at a price of 1350. It kind of plateaus for a little bit, but then it climbs back up. It climbs as high at 1650 in January of this year. Again, the, the, the game was out there for a while. It is the TV show that has accelerated what is happening with this particular comic. And in January, this book was selling for $1,600, which is a lot of money. And, and it actually has, has uh, dropped off just a little bit uh, in terms of its average price, but it's still, in my mind, relatively expensive. And, and I think that there are several reasons for why that is the case. And we've already hit on some of it, including the very small uh, census count. Which, which could change. We could see that number uh, of book graded copies actually tick up now that the, you know, this thing has come to the mainstream. People are paying closer attention. We could see some additional copies actually flow into CGC for grading. How many? Who knows? I honestly don't know how high it could go, but you can see uh, in the data here that the one year average, the, the 90 day and the 30 day are all relatively flat, all relatively flat as to what's happening with this book. You can see the high end this book has gone for as much as $2,000 because the middle column is averages on the right hand side. It's the high and on the left hand side, it's the low. The book has been relatively stable for a long period of time. But as you look at some of the individual sales, you can see somebody was trying to get you know, sell this book for, for $2,000. There was one that they tried to sell for 17. Uh, but as you go back through the data at one point back in January, this book indeed did sell for $2,000. Again, oh, it looks like somebody actually has multiple copies, multiple copies of this book at a 9.8. Somebody was definitely planning that. So that person had three copies, uh, four copies. And I wonder how they sold off. I wonder if we see some of those individual sales up here uh, as they got that $2,000, whether they offered a couple of more to try to see what would happen with it. 
But again, this is a book that right now I would absolutely not touch. Again, it doesn't mean that it's not a good book. I just don't think that now is the time to pick it up because everyone is paying attention to it. And, and it's our nature to, to go out and try to buy the book that, that is the hot book that everybody is talking about. I, I honestly would resist those temptations if, if I were you. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at another book. This, this again is a, is a really awesome book that has seen its values. Uh, increase. And uh, this is one again that I would not pick up. It is the Omega Men issue number three, the first appearance of Lobo. Now, the reason why I would not pick this book up is because Jason Momoa is rumored to be playing Lobo. And I feel like that's the reason why we see uh, the value of this book where it is right now. I, I think Lobo is a great character, but I think that it is the Jason Momoa comments and, and him alluding to the fact that he is going to be at Lobo that is actually keeping the, the price or the value of this book a, a little bit higher. This book was released in 1983. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And what we see here is that there are a healthy number of copies of this book graded out there. I mean, 8,500 copies. That's a lot in comparison to what we just saw with the Dark Horse book at less than 300 copies. Uh, there's 8,500 total copies out there of which 8,000 of them are blue label. And you can see here a healthy number of that census count is actually the, the 9.8. There are more 9.8s on the census than there are 9.6s and certainly more than, than 9.4s. Uh, but let's go ahead and click on this book and we can, we can drill into this data a little bit more here. I want to take that off. You can see that this book started to climb back in 2020, like so many other books, but then it fell off. It fell off in October of 2022, and then you can see the book spike back up to as much as $400 in January. And I want to say this is around the time that Jason Momoa started making some of his comments about, you know, he's going to be Aquaman forever, but there's other things that he's been speaking with Dave, uh, with, um, with DC about that being Lobo. And, and I do believe the, the high water, yeah, that that book in January was basically close to its high water mark back in 2021. That high water mark was $405. And like I said, in uh, January, this book was $400. You can see here on the, the average, the one year to the 30 day, it has actually been somewhat stable, but the high water mark again, gets up a, a little bit higher here. You can see 560 $63 at the one year, $563 at the 90 day has dropped in the 30 day to around $400. Uh, but again, this is, this is not a book that I would pick up right now. Now, if I could find this book or the last book raw out in the wild if for a good price, potentially I would, but the question will be with, with this book specifically, could we see the value of this book declined before it goes up. And I say that because Jason Momoa has a movie coming out. He has Aquaman 2 that is going to be released. That movie is not coming out until December 2023. Fingers crossed. They've moved the date multiple times, but potentially this movie will not be released until the end of this year. In my mind, I do not see them announcing Jason Momoa as Lobo until after that movie comes out and, and is in theaters for a period of time, right? Because if they were to announce him, him being Lobo, potentially that would create a lame duck situation for the Aquaman movie, a movie that has the potential to make a lot of money. And so in, in that time period between now and and the movie leaving theaters, the Aquaman movie leaving theaters, you could see a decline in value. A lot of excitement now potentially will wane, and that might be the time to actually pick up Omega Man issue number three, the first appearance of Lobo. So that that is my logic behind uh, not buying this book right now. Uh, the potential time to snag it could be in several months. The last book that I want to highlight is this one right here, Booster Gold, issue number one. This book was released in 1986. This is the first appearance of Booster Gold, a character that I have uh, had the pleasure of reading 
over the last couple of months. Uh, I think part of it is because of James Gunn making the announcement of, of Booster Gold coming out, quirky character, but also because of subscribers of this channel that are fans of Booster Gold that have inspired me to read some of his comic. This is not a bad character. This is not a bad book, but... I don't think now is the time to pick up this book because of the excitement of Booster Gold actually uh, being made into, I, I think it's a movie, I think being made into a movie. So when we dig into this, you can see that there are not a ton of copies of this book out there on the census, at least, right? There are there are basically uh, a total of 1,800, 1,900 total graded copies out there. Now, potentially, this number will increase. Again, this book was released in 1986. The print runs in 1986 were not exactly small, but because the value of this book and the interest in this book wasn't high prior to, to James Gunn's announcement, uh, that might be the reason why we are seeing a small census count here. And this census count could increase uh, in, the, in the weeks and months ahead. So let's go ahead and drill into the 9.8 here. And I wanna look at this data ever so quickly. I'm going to toggle that off. You can see, see the curve, right? You you can see it, right? Uh, it, it it goes up. The the most recent price for this book was basically five hundred and ten dollars. That was the most recent average price. Uh, that that is a little lower than its high water mark back in July of 2021 at five hundred and sixty three dollars. But again, th this is definitely an elevated price. In December, this book at a nine point eight was selling for two hundred and fifty. $2, $252 on average in December is what this book was selling for and has climbed to $509 as of February. Again, this book is being pushed up by the announcement by James Gunn. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it's something to be aware of. And you can see here on this side, the high watermark, $699. Here it is. This, this actually happened uh, in, in February. It happened in February. Somebody bought this book for $700. That is a person that probably snagged this one because of FOMO. FOMO got this person at $6.99. You can back up here. You can see in early uh, February, there's another book somebody offered up for $7.25. It did not sell for that much. $7.50 did not go for that much. We'd have to go to Terapeak on eBay to figure out how much uh, th those sold for. Uh, but yeah, somebody, somebody potentially caught a brick here, right? Because you can see just a day later, the book went for $452. And a few days before that, it was $280. So I don't know why anybody would pay $699, but they did. They did. Maybe they were a, a late blooming uh, Booster Golds fan. And that's why that happened. But Again, Booster Gold's a great character. I think James Gunn potentially will have a lot of fun with this character because he is very quirky. And James Gunn seems to really like those type of characters. Great book, but now potentially is not time to snag this book. All right. Just wanted to share a couple of books with you all that that I would avoid right now. I think that there is a really long list of books that I would also avoid, but there's also an equally long list of books that are are really great, uh, that are really perfect right now for picking up. And potentially I'll be releasing a video here on the channel. Snag these books now to identify a couple of those books that you may want to consider picking up. Which with that said, I am going to wrap this video up. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed this video, I want to encourage you to hit thumbs up, leave a comment behind. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I definitely want to encourage you to do that. And if you need to reach out to me for whatever reason, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care.